but that's how it's supposed to be. That is full, isn't it? Yeah. That one says nice. Did you write that? No, I did not. Does any of the other ones have anything on it? The same thing. Do they all say nice? Yeah. You ordered three of the same thing, so I'm going to give you a different clothes. So they said nice all around. Yeah. So we're three nice people. That's sweet. I'll let you have the nice one. How about that? Don't drop it. A fairly common problem with the S2000 is the steering angle sensor. That tells essentially the power steering when to assist and when to tighten up the steering. So when you start to experience that really difficult turn to the left and then all of a sudden it assists and then it's hard back to the right, it's pretty common. We see this a lot. We've seen this where if you sit on a perfectly stopped flat surface and you just put a little bit of pressure to the left, sometimes it will actually take off your hand and spin all the way to the lock. So don't panic, it doesn't typically do this once you start moving anything above two or three miles an hour. I've never seen it do that. It's just when you're completely stationary and there's no resistance it's essentially on a flat surface. If it starts to assist to the left and then hard to the right, typically the steering angle sensor, and it won't show an EPS light for that when the sensor is failing. It's weird how it doesn't do that, but it's a common issue. You can take them apart and clean them and it will work for a short amount of time. Some people have had better luck than others. We've done half a dozen because it was an option we was gonna offer and we've been kind of keeping tabs on this, but I think out of the six we did, four of them just failed after two or three months. So it's not a viable option, especially if you're gonna charge a customer if it only lasts two months, it's not really worth it. So we're gonna do a clutch on this car as well and the steering angle sensor, it's a replacement part. I'm gonna show you it and hopefully it gives us options for the future. See what kind of codes we got. There is a check engine light that came on as soon as I drove it in. Air injection, incorrect upstream airflow. What's the other one? Uh, both of them are the air injection, which part of it is missing. So we're doing an OEM clutch in this car, which in my opinion is the best clutch you can buy. It's not the Exedi clutch. It is made by FCC. It doesn't have Exedi on it anywhere. Exedi make clutches for the K series and B series, but not for the S2000. It says right there, FCC. And it has the Honda embossed on it. And of course we use the Nachi Baron and the Nachi Pilot Baron. So on this car also, I'm gonna update you here in a minute but he said it has a steering angle problem or he described the problem and we said yes it is a steering angle sensor which is extremely expensive and difficult to get so we have an aftermarket option i think i want to talk to him and see if he is interested in being a guinea pig for it part of being a guinea pig is we give him a really good price on it and he has to stay in touch with us and kind of let us know how it works basically say hey is it still working if it isn't we won't sell it anymore but if it is and it continues it might be a viable option over the factory sensor this is one that we did just recently this is what the steering angle sensor consists of when you buy it from honda you replace this whole thing and there is a few threads about taking it apart and cleaning it and putting dielectric grease on it and putting it back together which we've tried too and we haven't had i would say 15, 20% success rate. We've got a couple of customers that said, yes, theirs is still fine. And other customers that say, yeah, it started doing it, you know, two or three months later. So we don't want that happening unless it's just such a cheap service, you don't care. But you don't want to have that continuously happening. So basically the aftermarket one replaces just this section right here, which is the electric portion of things. Okay, so he has agreed to be a guinea pig. We're gonna give him a, basically the cost of what we paid for this. This is just this sensor portion like I mentioned, and it should save him a fortune. If it works, obviously we're hoping it does because it's gonna save a lot of money. It's a direct bolt-in, and if it does work, we're gonna offer it to you, the S2000 owner that's trying to save money because this sucker is 900 bucks. This is a lot less. So we're going to put this on and I'll periodically check in with you. I'll put it in the videos. If you watch our videos, you're going to see me periodically talk about this. I'm not going to make a dedicated video saying follow up on the sensor because it would be a, a three second video or a 10 second video. So keep an eye on our videos and I'll let you know how this works out. 
definitely confidence the fact that it comes in a really wrinkly back. It feels like everything's going to be good, right? Listen to that. I told you everything's good. Transmission's backed away. That's the clutch. It is an ACT. I don't know if it's an ACT with an OEM pressure, uh, OEM disc and ACT pressure plate. We'll take that apart. Take a look at it here in a minute. So for you guys that don't know, ACT, that logo right there. I just talked to somebody about this last night and he said, yeah, I'm a big fan of the ACT clutch. So ACT is Advanced Clutch Technologies. I don't know if they go by that anymore, but it was back in 97 when I first uh, bought an ACT clutch package when they first started. I was one of the early dealers, but I think they just go by ACT now. Let's take this sucker out and see what it looks like. If there's anything like the dowels, it's not gonna come off. Yeah, this thing was stuck heavy on the dowels. These dowels right here, see how rusty that is? That's part of the centering to make sure it's perfectly in line and they were stuck. Something's pretty common, they'll just rust on there. We're not using this clutch again, so we don't really care about uh, twisting the pressure plate, but when you install them and remove them, you should always do them in a sequence so you don't bend that pressure plate. Let's see what disc is in it. And the survey says, while the crowd is cheering and getting unruly. Looks like the OEM disc on it. Nope. No, Exedi disc. ACT. No, it is an ACT. I can't see if they shut it. Yeah, it yeah. is ACT. Just have the Nachi bearing. Right there. You see that? But it's not bad. Just a little bit of wear on there, a little bit close on the material and the rivets. But if it had an aftermarket bearing, that would probably have wiped out long ago. Any of those aftermarket bearings just don't work. You can see here on the flywheel where the contact surface of the disc has been making its friction surface. And over here, it's a pretty big step. This is why you have to surface these. And when you surface it, this surface has to be surfaced and this there is a calculation between these two surfaces here and it has to be maintained your clutch pressure plate is mounted to here this offset is so it has the uh, the correct amount of pressure on your disc if you machine just this surface and not this one at the same time you're losing some of your friction surface and some of your spring tension on your pressure plate and it'll essentially just void the warranty because it'll ruin your clutch just wanted to show you the finish that we have on here. When you turn a flywheel, you gotta make sure these steps are done correctly. If not, you'll wear the clutch out. This has to have the correct amount. And then when you put this, I just hit it brake later. When you put this finish on there, it helps the clutch brake in faster. Here is our torque sensors. Just to get an idea, this one has, uh, what happened to the dust cap that was on it? Where's the dust cap? It's uh, at the end of the torque wrench. Oh, okay. All right. At first, it just looked like it was a different dimension, but it's not. Anyway, there's a dust cap that goes on here, but it looks the same. I mean, it's fingers crossed. It fits back in and works. I mean, what's the worst thing that can happen? Famous last words. This is a pretty important part that often gets missed. This is the slide or the guide. If you buy the LHT install kit, that comes with it, as well as the main seal, which I forgot to show you behind there, and the main seal on the motor. Something really important to do, because if you overlook that and you have a slight leak, it's gonna ruin your clutch prematurely. Get to check it off. Should we test it? Oh, uh, we can. Okay. I missed that, can you play that again? Yeah. Well, I'll have to use the translator, I don't know what that said. Waiting for it to turn off. I think it's the camera that said it. Oh, okay. I see the camera there now. Yep. Ready? Yep. Yeah, I have no clue. All right, hit it. check engine light which we're going to be addressing that next doesn't try and take off out your hands 
if you've run into this before, if uh, we see this on S2000s a lot, it will assist to the left to a point it'll sometimes pull out your hands and go all the way to the full lock, and then it's stiff to the right. Like it assists to the left, not to the right. Of course, on the ground, it's gonna give you the best idea, but it's operating like it should. But you will feel it kind of turn and kind of do this, and then it will go easy, and then going back, it's it's like it jerks, and it's just that sensor not picking up a correct signal and you know drop it out. So fingers crossed, our new sensor is a fix for it because it's much much cheaper and it's more available, and we'll keep you guys informed. But let's do the next little trick, and then we'll take this for a drive. Where is it? There it goes. Seems to be good now. Code's cleared, just gonna check it, make sure operation sounds good. I'll put my point of the screen warning so you guys can see. Alright, so I think we'll fix the code. We're gonna drive it a little bit. Drive shot makes a little bit of noise. Clutch is nice. Clutch is gonna feel delightful after that ACT clutch that he had. Not knocking ACT clutch, they're just, they're just heavy. A lot of pedal pressure. Can't beat the OEM one. Very first drive with a clutch is always something I like to go really, really easy with to a point that I like to break them in on the lift for the first mile, which as you see right there, just so it gives the clutch chance before you start putting any friction or heat into it. So I'm really hoping that the torque sensor works or it continues to work. That light will go off here in a few minutes. It's because I've been running the back wheels on the lift. So the car thinks it's been doing a massive burnout. So once I get rolling, that light will go off. Make sure we reset that before we give it back to him. But this is gonna make the job so much cheaper by not selling someone the whole torque sensor. And like I mentioned, you can take them apart and clean them. It's just not a long-term solution. It seems very short-lived. But so far, steering feels good. It's got even feel both sides. I'm gonna go to the parking lot here in a minute and go back and forth, uh, full lock to full lock, and just confirm everything is good. The ABS light is still on. Usually goes off within like a quarter of a mile. So it should go off any minute. So the steering is still feeling normal. often it will assist to the left and not to the right when it starts to go out and then it starts jerking where it puts a ton of assist to the left and zero to the right so far so good I've just done a bunch of back and forth on the steering wheel just to make sure that everything feels normal and everything is good so I can call him it's got 2.4 miles on the clutch he can do the rest of break-in. Uh, organic disc will break in faster than the aftermarket clutches. Like the FX300 needs at least 500 miles break-in. I tell people more than that, break them in as long as you can. This, I would do normal driving for probably 300 miles. Doesn't need a lot, just to avoid slipping them. And obviously fast shifting just until it's fully engaged and making full contact. But this one's good, we can call him. It is, um, what is it, May 10th? We'll keep tabs every month or so. We'll do an update on the speed angle sensor and let you know what it's doing. I will keep you guys updated on the steering angle sensor. These are expensive, like I said, we do have a couple that we bought before they were discontinued, but they are still pricey. If this is the solution, it's gonna save everyone money and keep these cars on the road, which is what it's all about. We've actually tried a few of these over the years. There's a few out there on eBay and we had one that just didn't work at all. It was just, just junk. So it does have these tamper proof fasteners right here. You see where it's a star drive with a pin in the middle. I don't know why they do that because there's a tool for those. So it's almost like, you know, changing the lock and then somebody comes out with a new key. 
anyway we have those tools so we can take them apart as you saw in the video but like i say i'll go to periodically check in with you and let you know how that works so i can advise you if it's worth doing this is a different car this is going to be on a separate video it's getting full maintenance and lht love it's a car that's been sitting for a while so we're going to bring it up to spec on all the maintenance clean the injectors and give it a clean bill of health so look out for this on a future video guys thank you so much for watching if you like the content like i always tell you hit the subscribe hit the share it hit the like but more importantly enjoy your cars